When it comes to local storage in Flutter, I used to love using a database called Hive, but it hasn't been updated in a long time. Like you can see two years ago, but it has 1 million downloads. Recently, there's this community edition that has gained more popularity and I'm making this tutorial to give more exposure to this package so that it doesn't die. I really love using Hive because of its simplicity. So go show some love to this package. Let's try to keep this one alive. Now, let me show you the very basics on how to get started. You can store these very basic data types. So string, integer, double, just all of these basic types. Now, the first thing to do is to add this package and make sure to initialize it. So just initialize Hive and also open up a box. Now, when it comes to the basic operations, you've got the uh, opening and closing the box. You can just call this box whatever you want. And also the CRUD operations, right? So starting with the put, this is gonna be the most commonly used one where you just add a key, some type of value. So we got get, delete, and you can also just clear the entire box. One useful one I feel like you can know about is this listener. So you can listen to the box, but you can listen to a specific key in the box. And if anything changes, then you can just rebuild everything. So on a very high level, this is just the summary of what you would need. Now, I feel like the best way to learn if you haven't really used this stuff before is to build a very basic notes app or like a to-do app to try to store information in the local storage and read from it. So that's what I'm gonna show you in the next part. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which brings us to this home page which is just a blank scaffold. So you should just have a white blank app like this. Now, the first thing I want you to do is to open up your terminal and let's add in the packages. So Flutter, Pub, Add, Hive, Community Edition, as well as the Hive CE Flutter. So add those two things. And then in the main function, let's change it to an asynchronous so that we can initiate initialize hive and then we're going to open up a box so if you start saying hive you can see that there it is let's enter to auto import and then we can init flutter now let's open up a box and you can call it whatever you want i'm just going to call it my box And then now in our home page, we can reference the box. So let's get the box by referencing that name. My box. And then let's create a text controller so that we can access what the user types. And let's create our list of to-dos, which will be just blank list right now. Sweet, and then in the initial state, so when this page first loads up, let's load the data. And if no data exists, then we're just going to default to a empty list. Cool, so we're gonna to need to create a couple of methods here. So the first thing is just adding a new to do, right? as well as deleting a to do. Sweet, so if you look down in the scaffold, if you go to the floating action button, you can see that we can create that there. Now I'm just gonna give it an icon. So I got the plus sign. And now if I click on this, what I wanna do is I wanna open a new to do dialog box. All right, so let's just call it open new to do. And let's see if we get this. So if I click the on pressed, then let's open to do. And you can see it's gonna open up that alert dialog. So now we can start filling this out. In the content, I'm going to use a text field. And so if you save this and you have a look inside the text field, you can start typing stuff in. Now to access what the user typed, we're going to give it our controller.
And then beneath this, let's have some actions. So we want a cancel button and an add button. Sweet, so there it is. And we can now cancel and then add. So starting with the cancel, I just want to pop the box. And let's also clear what's in the controller. Nice. Now if I click on add, I'm going to do the same thing. Just pop the box. And then we want to add this to do. So now let's come down here and create this method. So firstly, let's get the text from that controller. And then let's update the state and just add it to our list of to-dos. And then we can clear the controller. So we've got that button. And now beneath it, let's do in the body the display list of to-dos. So we're going to use a list view builder. And the item count is obviously just the length of our to-do list. And then in the builder, let's start by getting each to-do. Let's cycle through the to-dos list using the index to get each to-do. And so if I put this in a list tile, you can see that it's now showing up. Beautiful. One thing I want you to do at this point is because we brought in some new packages, it's always a good idea to just kill the app and then rebuild it so that it's got all those packages included. So that's just what I'm doing right now. Cool, and here it is. So one thing I just want to show you is if I add in a couple of to-dos and then I refresh the app, then you can see nothing's actually getting saved. Right, so we've got it in the sort of local state in these to-do lists. But now let's actually save it to the database using Hive. Right, so all we need to do is we just need to go to our box and use the put keyword. And I'm going to use the key to-do list and we're going to give it our list there. So if I just try this again after I save it, I'm going to add in these new to-dos and then if I refresh it you can see it's still persistent so it's actually getting stored in the memory now cool which brings us naturally to the deleting part so if you come down to our list tile on the trailing section let's just include an icon button to delete Right, so there's our button. So if I click on this, then let's now delete the to-do. So let's create that method real quick. So we're just going to remove it with that given index and then save to the database. So when we click the delete to-do, we're going to pass through the index so we know which one we're looking at. And beautiful. So that's how we use Hive local storage. If you made it to the end of the tutorial, please drop a purple heart in the comments just so I know.